Hello everyone. I welcome you all in the lecture series of cognitive ergonomics. Today we are going to have our third lecture on human error. As we discussed in previous lecture about uh, the error, the types of error, management of error and also about different factors such as insecure psychology, external physiological factors, environmental factors, safety training, safety skills uh, which are required and which uh, failure in any one of these factors leads towards the human error and the accident. Today we, what we are going to talk about control measures. Previous uh, lecture we talked about detecting errors, how we are able and capable to detect the errors. If we detect the errors uh, beforehand then it will be a win-win situation because not only we are detecting the error beforehand but we can also come up with the countermeasures towards it. In this lecture uh, what we are talking about uh, going to start with is the control measures of human error. So what uh, uh, kind of control measures we can take uh, towards the uh, human error? One is the strengthening the staff safety knowledge. So if we can strengthen the staff safety knowledge and skill training this impro uh, improves the employees comprehensive quality. If this would have been done at the Chernobyl uh, um, uh, nuclear power plant then we may uh, have been able to avoid such uh, big human disaster. If safety knowledge and skill uh, training would have been given at the Bhopal gas tragedy, then uh, we would have avoided uh, the Bhopal gas tragedy leak as well. Sometimes these uh, challenge, uh, um, these um, safety knowledge, lack of safety knowledge and um, uh, skill training actually results towards the human error. Second is establishing perfect match rules and regulations. So certain match rules and regulations are also required strengthening the basic uh, management system because such, such uh, rules and regulations need to be revised from time to time not only to establish it and also how uh, from time to time such revision actually strengthen the basic management system. So when such systems are being revised um, uh, from time to time when uh, modification is being performed as the context changes as the uh, people join the body uh, regularly uh, at regular pace then such systems need to be more and more rigid in nature. Uh, then uh, the final is the uh, making the role model uh, enhancing the uh, leadership safety awareness program towards it to make it more uh, robust in nature so that one can uh, understand the real uh, situation in uh, and real environmental condition in which person is working. Creating the safe cultural atmosphere, training staff safety awareness program. Uh, it is same like the uh, earlier strengthening the staff safety program. Paying attention to employee psychological activity, promote uh, work enthusiasm. This is an important element because in the organizational psychology what we have understood, two factor theory which talks about the hygiene factor. This is uh, promoting the work uh, enthusiasm. If we motivate the uh, factors, if we are encouraging the factor, if we are providing the employee with a very healthy environment, then uh, not only the performance efficiency, uh, but user satisfaction will also increase. So in the in the discipline of uh, uh, ergonomics, what uh, we have seen when the psychological activity is being, uh, when, when the psychological activity is challenged, when the psychological process of an employee is challenged, when the uh, work enthusiasm is being challenged, then the human chances of human error uh, escalates. Implementation of safety production responsibility system also. So, dividing the responsibility, uh, providing responsibility to each and every individual, what kind of task, what kind of activity one has to perform that uh, ensures the safety environment, that ensures the uh, uh, dependence on other, that ensures the distributed cognition. All these things promotes the uh, strengthening of the workplace setting, uh, ensures the uh, control measures also ensures the avoid um, uh, avoiding the human error occurrence uh, and then the strengthening the management mechanism itself what kind of uh, management is required how one has to follow what kind of action steps are required uh, in a sequential task vocational adaptability test protect the health of the employee uh, many organization many big organization organization seems to have a vocational uh, training programs where, where employees seem to be more attached, where employees seem to be more connected. On, on such big organ organizations also ensured that the employees should be having a health insurance plan so that tomorrow if any employee is having any health condition, physical, psychological, cognitive, they may uh, take uh, the benefit of such program. If the employee is not happy, 
then the organization can never be happy. So hence, uh, and then if the employee is not happy, organization is not happy, then the chances of error will be uh, there, performance will be compromised, efficiency will be compromised, and then the sa uh, safety parameters will be compromised as well. Reasonable design workplace and guarantee the good environment. So a reasonable work uh, workplace uh, need to be provided and then a good environment is uh, is important. These days in the modern world, uh, unlike uh, um, uh, three, four decades back, people are more concerned about the work uh, environment. So if the work environment is not uh, very healthy, then it is seen that uh, employees tend to leave the organization and move it uh, to another organization. And that is why uh, many big organizations, the prime concern is how uh, well and good and uh, healthy environment they can provide to their employees. Uh, um, a small organization haven't started working towards it, a small organization haven't paid attention to it, but it has come to uh, our understanding that slowly, slowly uh, we, we see few changes as um, um, uh, robust changes in such organizations also. Post, we should not ignore the fact that post pandemic has changed such um, uh, reasonable design workplace and uh, the uh, workplace environment. Okay. So, uh, talking about uh, uh, such um, uh, control measures, it is very important for us to uh, understand the, um, uh, the management system of the uh, error, human uh, error manage management system. And with this, we can uh, take an easy example of the Swiss cheese model, very well known and established uh, model, which addresses how a, a system can avoid a accidents and uh, how a system can be avoided an accident or how. Uh, and how uh, control measures are being taken up. So, for example, these uh, in this Swiss trees, if you see, there are uh, small holes are there. You can uh, look into the internet. These uh, Swiss trees are having uh, different different holes. And these, uh, if you put these trees uh, um, uh, in uh, in a line, then uh, and if you uh, pass a straight line um, uh, through these holes, any one of these holes, then it means that different stages are there. Each cheese represent different stages um, uh, from um, the uh, hazard condition to the loose condition. So, there is an incident has occurred and incident leading towards the human error. I incident uh, leading towards the human error, uh, all these stages can be seen as a barrier. So, when these barriers uh, are well aligned to each other and when all the holes are matching uh, to one another, then the uh, anything can uh, pass through without hurdle, without interference, and then the human error um, uh, may occur. But when, uh, when these cheeses are not well aligned, when, they, uh, when the holes are of different specific sizes, uh, when these holes are not well aligned, then there will be an interference here, or interference can uh, happen here, or interference can happen here. Any one of these interference can block the uh, development of the human error. As a result, the, uh, though the hazard, hazardous event has occurred, but the error can be stopped at any one of these stages. So, what we see here, different defenses, different barriers, different safeguards can be employ, uh, employed uh, here. Uh, high technology systems may have many defensive systems. So, uh, from the cheese, Swiss cheese model, what we understand, different layers are there. So, to, ha to avoid the human error, different layers can be provided in. Different uh, safety uh, and these uh, each layer can be uh, call it, uh, we can call it as defensive layers. And in high technological system, there are many defensive layers are there. For instance, if you are entering into a Google uh, industry, uh, no, uh, you cannot just directly go to uh, and uh, meet a CEO of the Google. But there are several diff uh, different uh, defensive layers are there. First defensive layer is the door. Once you cross the door, uh, then you enter into the reception desk. Reception desk person is going to ask you uh, what kind of, uh, 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 with whom you are having a meeting, whom you would like to meet. And then uh, uh, after checking, then you go to the security check. After the security check, then you will be given a batch or a tag to go to meet a specific person. Then a specific person will direct you that, okay, I'm going to take you to another person and then another person and another person. So higher the organization is, higher the technological system is, you will find a lot of several defense layer systems are there. The same uh, example, you can find it in our, uh, uh, with the, uh, our prime minister office that if you want to meet uh, the prime minister, then it is not so easy. You have to uh, pass through different different defensive layers. And once you pass through these defensive layers, when the threat is no, no more there, 
then you may get a chance to meet the prime minister okay so relying on the engineering system what are the uh, 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 defensive layers uh, one could have it so one could have a physical system that is an engineering system so engineering system may alarms uh, physical barriers automatic shutdown is there automatic shutdowns or even the, these electro um, these um, uh, touch pad or uh, di uh, digital lock uh, systems are there which uh, provide extra safety and defensive layer to the organization itself if you uh, enter into uh, unauthorized area then there will be suddenly an alarm system will be there if in an unauthorized system uh, area uh, you are uh, doing any unauthorized activity then also the alarm system will be um, uh, started relying on the people so uh, if you take an example of uh, you know uh, uh, different workplace settings such as if you go to the hospital then you have to rely on the person such as uh, surgeons uh, uh, anesthetics are there uh, if you are uh, uh, flying from um, uh, Uttarakhand to uh, Kanyakumari, then you uh, rely on the pilots. And uh, then uh, similarly, uh, when you are uh, the pilot is relying on the control room operators, what kind of um, uh, um, gu guidelines or guidance he is being provided uh, from the ground to fly the aeroplane in the space. Then procedures uh, and administrative control, what kind of administrative role is required. Now all these things provide a defensive layer to it. Once uh, all these things are well aligned, uh, then the chances of errors may uh, occur. So, But there are uh, two uh, major factors behind uh, such also. Some factors we, you can see though uh, which leads towards the failure that uh, uh, factors we call it as active failures. But some factors are not visible to us, which is hidden in nature. Those uh, factors uh, we are calling it as latent conditions. So, what are the active failures and what are the latent conditions? L uh, let us see in our uh, next uh, uh, following slides. Before we go there, we know that the uh, pandemic uh, changed the uh, course of action uh, in the human history. Now, uh, such examples we can see in a double Swiss uh, cheese model with the pandemic. Uh, COVID-19 virus. So, what we see is that there is a personal responsibility to up to this level and then there is a shared responsibility. When the pandemic started uh, to spread, it was uh, the personal responsibility that we should not be roaming around at public places, we should not, we should not, uh, we should be putting the, uh, our mask, we should be maintaining a two uh, feet distance um, uh, and uh, for ensuring also washing our hand, face regularly, changing the dresses. These were the personal responsibilities. So, uh, physical distance, staying at home, if I am sick, uh, putting mask, hand hygiene and avoiding touching uh, our face uh, repeatedly again and again. Uh, shared responsibility was, if I am crowded, uh, limiting my time space, how much I am spending the time in a crowd, in a queue or in a grocery store or uh, uh, waiting at the train station for the train fast and sensitive uh, testing and uh, tracing. So, what kind of COVID test I can follow, the test which can give me quick results, that was a shared responsibility. So, quickest uh, result I get, then I can share this uh, with my friends, family members, colleagues, so that they can also undergo uh, the test and ensure that they are safe or they may be contaminated with the virus. Uh, shared responsibility, ventilation doors, air filtration should be provided, should be used. Uh, should be promoted, should be encouraged so that one can avoid these virus, then government messaging and financial support. How can I support the government? Uh, so, so that that was a shared responsibility because there is an aid required. The government is supporting the poor and needy people. But for that also they need an assistance, financial assistance. So if we can provide that aid, that would be a helpful quarantine and isolation and then the vaccines. So what we see here, there are different layers towards it. Any one of these layers, uh, see when these layers are well aligned, then the virus can pass through. But any one of these, when it is this virus is reaching here, there is no hole. There is no hole. As a result, what will happen? That there will be a barrier. This will be a barrier and it will stop the virus to spread further down the line. If uh, 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 the uh, virus crosses this line, then it is getting the hole here and it may further reaches to the line. So, th this is what we see, uh, saw from the Swiss cheese model that these different stages, these different defensive layer should not be well aligned and actually uh, uh, at any stage, at any uh, 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 action step, 
can be taken to avoid and to defeat this uh, COVID-19 virus and that, that is how we try to rescue ourselves over a period of time. So, when we are talking about the active failure and latent condition, uh, it is very important for us to why to study such thing because all adverse conditions uh, are involving active failure and latent conditions. Active failures are unsafe acts committed by people who are in direct contact with the patient or the system. So, what are those uh, unsafe acts which people are following? Many a time a person is following an unsafe act like in the Chernobyl incident uh, case if we talk about people just uh, try to give the instruction to the operator lower the fuel rod uh, let us uh, start the reactor. But, uh, instead of understanding what are the limitations why uh, some more testings are required one should not be ignoring uh, the failure uh, of the uh, nuclear reactor uh, 3 which uh, ha occurred a uh, few months back all those uh, negligence all those ignorance um, um, done by the supervisor uh, resulted into the failure in the Chernobyl. Similarly in the COVID uh, also lot of ignorance and uh, failures happen um, from the people from this uh, in, in a way that resulted into the uh, lot of casualties and death. So, such kind of system if we talk about there are uh, active failures are there. Now, we talk about the variety of errors. So, slip, lapses, fumbles, mistakes, procedural violations are there. Certain procedure need to be uh, followed, but people are violating it as a result uh, it may occur, uh, occur. So, active conditions can be direct and they, can, uh, and they are short lived. When we talk about the latent conditions which is latent in, uh, which is hidden in nature. So, this arises from the decisions made by the designers, builders, procedures. Uh, procedure writers and the top level management. They uh, uh, are making such errors and uh, that is one reason when the um, Chernobyl incident occurred then people were ignorant, uh, people were lacking the knowledge uh, about the information that when the fuel rod is going to uh, come down then it may uh, result into the uh, high exothermic reaction. So, that is coming from the uh, decision made by the top level management. They try to keep it secret. Similarly, may, there are many such uh, incidents which has occurred uh, in which we observe that top level management has uh, not uh, you know tried to hide it. Where many a time you know builders have not paid attention to it. Many a times uh, the designers have not paid attention to. So, if we talk about the uh, Columbia shuttle experiment where the foam just came out nobody observed, nobody noticed, but when it entered into this uh, earth atmosphere then it resulted into a big uh, human disaster. Latent conditions can be of two uh, types. Uh, so, one is error provoking conditions where, uh, where the error is being provoked and then creating long lasting holes and weaknesses in the defense system and another is that you create a long lasting holes. So, in the Swiss cheese model if, if you saw there are several small holes were there. So, these holes were being created which is you know um, um, ensuring that uh, the weakness is uh, already present in the defense system and slowly slowly it actually corrupts the defensive layer systems and these are hidden in nature nobody observes it notices it. So, uh, something can be seen as a co uh, the materials which people are being used uh, the materials which people are using to construct the uh, monuments buildings uh, let us say composite material is being used the, the uh, life of this composite material is uh, short life. Uh, is there and nobody know, observed it, but because of the construction somebody has used it, uh, the problem did not emerge out at the first year, second year, third year, but gradually a uh, problem is started to emerge out from the uh, uh, fifth year onwards and then the structure uh, do not last uh, very long and then it collapsed. Uh, ma many occasions we have seen such thing that the builders cre uh, have cre uh, um, uh, designed and built a bridge, but uh, they do not last very long after 10, 15 years then they collapse. Even the same thing we have seen in the uh, cases of the um, uh, road builds. So, latent conditions lies hidden within the system for many years before they combine with the active failures. Latent conditions is proactive rather than reactive risk management is there. So, this uh, um, um, uh, shift us towards the uh, risk management and in this risk management when we are talking about it uh, risk is the responsibility uh, that harms uh, death uh, injury illness is there when the people are exposed to the hazardous condition. So, there is a risk you know to the life when uh, the Bhopal gas tragedy happens the slowly people were being extra risks uh, towards the um, this ca um, ca uh, carbon carbide uh, gas was there which affected the uh, not only the generation first generation, but uh, several generations till date actually got, got affected. 
uh, identifying the risk uh, is uh, like problem solving process. So once you have identified the risk, uh, identifying risk is same as detecting the errors. So as uh, in previous lecture, I was telling you about detecting the error is actually a win-win situation because not only you are detecting the error beforehand, but also counter measurements uh, can be taken. Similarly, identifying the risk uh, is uh, like problem solving uh, process aimed at defining the problem. So identifying the hazard, what kind of hazard is it, um, uh, gathering information about the risk and solving them accordingly, you know, uh, so uh, counter measure can be taken. Uh, when we are doing the risk assessment um, uh, related to the risk, we consult the employees directly. Consulting employees allows better management the health and safety by more easily identifying the workplace risk and ensuring control put in the uh, uh, protect workers. So one easy example is that when a uh, Chernobyl incident occurred, then lot of uh, uh, survey studies we were being done. Uh, lot of um, you know uh, surveyors uh, they went to the um, uh, each and every employee. They started to document each and every uh, um, detail were being documented cross-checked, a lot of uh, such um, uh, information gathering uh, were being performed so that more and more information uh, can be collected in, uh, to, um, uh, and, uh, to understand uh, what was the root cause of this uh, in incident and slowly and gradually it is started to come out very clearly to us that it was uh, the failure, it was because of the latent conditions, some informations were not being shared. Uh, uh, from the uh, high man management authority which resulted into this. Uh, this brings us to the uh, last uh, topic uh, in the uh, human error that is error management. So in human uh, factor ergonomics developing the tools for managing the unsafe act, developing the tools for the, uh, for the human error actually uh, uh, seems to be very beneficial towards the human error management. Human er uh, error management can have two components in it limiting the incidence of the dangerous errors. How can we limit uh, the incidence of the dangerous errors? That is a point of uh, another discussion. But one thing is there that we have to limit the incidence of dangerous errors. If there are a number of dangerous errors are there, then we have to ensure that those errors uh, should be uh, fully documented. Creating a system that are better able to tolerate the occurrences of the error. So uh, also we have to create a safety system. So for instance, if uh, a chemical industry is there where a lot of uh, chemicals are being produced using an exothermic reaction or endothermic reaction, then we we need a safety system, some fire, uh, fire may get, um, fire may uh, caught up. So we need an extinguisher, different type of extinguishers will be required because different types of systems are there. Electrical systems is there, uh, then uh, the systems which can produce heat, um, uh, fire. So accordingly, we have to come up with those uh, system. High reliability organizations are uh, uh, the prime examples of system approach. High reliability organizations, if you talk about, uh, to name a few, uh, Google is their high reliability organization, Reliance is high reliability organization, uh, um, uh, Indian oil, um, um, Indian uh, gas, um, um, Indian is a high reliable, uh, reliability organization, Microsoft is high reliability organization and they are the prime example of the system approach, how we are approaching it. Similarly, high reliability organization system operating in hazardous conditions also. They are working in different hazardous conditions, different uh, places, a uh, lot of um, uh, you know um, hazardous uh, chemicals are being controlled, lot of lethal uh, chemicals are being um, um, controlled by them. So they, they are actually uh, an example of system approach and ensuring how robust we can make a system to avoid the human error. High reliability organization also provide an individual with a reminder and tools to help uh, them remember. So regular training workshops are there, regular refreshment course is there, regular tr uh, training to uh, uh, make, uh, to enhance the skill and uh, abilities of their employees. So high reliability or organization ensures that their uh, employees should have a regular uh, training and uh, workshops in this regard so that they can enhance their knowledge. And this uh, is being followed by the top management also. Uh, similarly, uh, any organization which fails to do such a thing, then uh, the chances of human error is very high. So um, 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 uh, there are several case studies such as uh, long back, uh, four, five years back, a pilot just crashed a plane in the Scandinavian uh, for, uh, mountains, uh, taking the life of uh, 120 passengers. Uh, the pilot was suffering from mental health and uh, the um, 
um, the organization, the um, uh, counselors were not able to detect that the person was suffering from the depression. So, such uh, um, high reliability uh, organizations have to ensure that their employees should be in a very good mental, physical and cognitive condition so that they can uh, such a, a human errors can be avoided. High reliability organizations are not immune to adverse events. Also, even after following such uh, management, even after uh, making the system so robust, it does not mean that they are immune. There will not be any uh, damage uh, may come to the system. They, uh, they, they are not uh, uh, foolproof. So, they use the feedback mechanism to make the system more resilient in nature, to make it more better and is, uh, uh, robust. So, what we learned in this um, um, previous um, from, uh, from this lecture that some control measures are required towards the human error. These control measures ensures that the human errors can be avoided, training is required, uh, the organization has to ensure that their employees should get sufficient uh, amount of sk uh, skill training uh, and they, uh, uh, they enhance their knowledge, they uh, repeatedly practice that so that at the time of need they, there should not be any human failure. Swiss cheese model we uh, try to understand that uh, how the, the different defensive barriers are there, defensive layers are there and when these defensive layers and barriers are well aligned uh, with each other then the uh, hazardous condition uh, to loss um, uh, condition um, it may happen and uh, the fail, human fa uh, error uh, the, the chances of human error will increase. But when these defensive ba uh, barriers, when the, these different uh, stages of cheeses which uh, are acting like different stages, different, different, uh, different defensive layers, they are not well aligned, then the tendencies can be avoided and the hazardous condition may occur, but the human error uh, is not uh, less likely to happen. Then the, uh, there is an active failure and latent conditions are there. These active failures and latent conditions are playing a crucial role. Some conditions are already there in the system from the start, but they do not get triggered. They get triggered by the uh, active failures. They wait, uh, they, they remain there in the system. If they are not triggered, then they are not triggered. But uh, after a certain time, they start to emerge out. Active failures are very uh, much common and the root cause in the uh, Swiss cheese model. We also saw that the active uh, failure and latent conditions uh, were the root, uh, were also the contributing factor towards the uh, COVID-19 spread in the virus. And uh, we saw this example uh, how the Swiss cheese model in the COVID-19 uh, is working. We discussed about the risk factors, how the risk factors can be detected, how uh, detection of the risk can uh, help uh, in avoiding the um, uh, human error and the risk management can be beneficial in nature and not only to uh, detecting the risk but also to countermeasure that. And then finally, we understood about the error management. In this error, error management, we understood that how we can manage the error. Uh, high uh, reliability organization is ensuring uh, that sufficient training, sufficient information, uh, uh, appropriate information should be provided to the employees so that they can enhance and enrich their knowledge towards the safety measures and protocol. But uh, even then also, it, it does not rule out the fact that a uh, high reliability organization um, uh, cannot come up with a pr uh, foolproof uh, method. So, um, uh, everybody has to work together in an organization sec setting. The, that is why personal responsibility and shared responsibility together can come uh, together and contribute. Uh, there are, uh, uh, there are uh, other uh, factors uh, are also uh, contributing in, in this uh, human error. Uh, but uh, in the next lecture, we are going to uh, talk about new topic, uh, cognitive safety with respect to human cognition. What cognitive safety, what cognitive factors are important towards uh, the uh, safety so that one can avoid the error management. As we saw in the insecure psychology, there are uh, several psychological parameters are there, certain cognitive factors are there. We, we will see, we will learn in the next uh, lecture about the cognitive safety how to uh, avoid uh, these uh, factors and uh, one can avoid the human error in this regard. With this, I would like to say thank you and see you uh, in the next, uh, uh, in our next lecture.